hey duck man, we don't want to listen to you and you should do it our way. So instead of working on all those breaks, even though you said it a million times to what they're for, but we're not going to listen anyway, you should address all the holes on the front of this bus instead first. Yeah, I got your holes. I got your holes right here. <laughs> Yeah. Now it's a low light. Let me remind you, my bus, my money, my way. And if I'm devaluing it, that's my problem. <laughs> I like what we've got going on here. Let the heat flow through you. Yeah, look, the left side now has all fresh windows too. But today we're gonna be working on the brakes. Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles NVW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with my Volkswagen bus. This is a split window bus you see behind me, completely custom. You can probably tell from how we started the video. Today we're gonna to be working on the brakes. We've got this wonderful Porsche stuff that you see down below here. And uh, we're gonna get this stuff installed on my split window bus. These are parts are not meant to be, but uh, using some of the custom adapters from the Transporter House kit, we're going to get that all mounted today and uh, get everything going for this car show so that way this bus will roll. The show is tomorrow. And we've got a tropical depression, maybe a tropical storm or something coming, but we're going to do the best we can to get this done. Uh, if it rains, well, we'll just have to deal with it. The show goes on, rain or shine. Clean off the junk that's on here. I'm awfully good at that. I've found to get the grease cap off, just a claw hammer is usually <laughs> usually the best way to do it. That was quite easy. These nuts that are in here, I expected to find a pinch nut, but I forgot. Early buses don't have that. Uh, we've got two nuts that are nutted against each other. That wasn't even properly tightened. I'm gonna have to go through everything on this bus because of reasons like that. Let's see, is this drum gonna come off easy? Maybe. Got our bearings. Yeah, drum came off pretty easy. Not too bad. Not too surprised. Brake shoe delaminated itself. That's what they tend to do. They start to rust on the inside and the shoes just come off. So anyway, that needs to go on the scrap pile. Looks like we've got four bolts that need to be removed. Looks like they're probably 15 millimeters. Looks like I'm correct. That one's really on there. Ah! Thought I was gonna have to get the torch. That one wasn't too bad. Oh, that's so much better. Okay, on the back side of this, we're going to have a nasty old brake line, which I did not cut or remove yet. In fact, it's so rotten, it might pull out if I just yank it. Nope, maybe not. Ooh, wiggly, wiggly. I know how much you guys got a laugh out of this the last time. <laughs> All this stuff can replace with all new. All right, there's our brake backing plate. And uh, to my surprise, I did not expect to see it, but there's two slave cylinders in there, top and bottom. All right, get that out of the way. This is all going to be disassembled, cleaned, and painted, but there's no time for that right now. The only thing I have time for is to get these brakes mounted so they look cool when this thing arrives at the show. I boosted up the exposure up there a little bit so you guys get a cleaner view. But it looks like the um, brake caliper is going to be on the trailing side. So it's going to be back over here. This is all going to go on this way. Got our nuts and bolts that came with the kit. Thank you, Alex. Thinking ahead, making sure that all the right hardware came with the kit. You know, it helps that I bolt this thing in right. Put this in this way. So that way the uh, 
spacers, you see them, they're welded down, face backwards. That seems to make logical sense to me that you'd want to space the caliper back. Boy, that bird is a we Took off 15s, but we're putting on 17s. Glad I guessed I had to grab wrenches for this stuff. You know what? I didn't grab all the wrenches. And I'll have a ratchet for that sucker. Well, we're going to be right back. <laughs> Ordinarily, this would be tightened down to a torque spec. I have to look in the book to find out what it is in the manual. I don't remember. I'm going to put it on the bottom of the screen. And I'll have this thing torqued up before we get done here. Right now, everything is just for show. Get us some grease here. Can I grease this shaft? <laughs> now this is a Porsche hub and this one I've already got it set up but we're gonna break away for a second and I'm gonna show you what it took to get this set up we've got my Porsche braking system here these are 944 hubs that you're looking at these are 944 turbo calipers and this is a disc that's the same thickness as a 1986 Porsche 944 the difference on this one, though, is the uh, 944 disc is actually very flat. It doesn't have a top hat shape like this on it. But the reason why I've selected this one over the other one is because this is not an 86 hub. If I had an 86 hub, I can get the proper disc that goes on the back of it. But this is earlier than an 86. And if I put on an earlier than 86 disc, the thickness of it is much thinner. And it won't be compatible with the turbo brakes. So this is what combination that I've got to put together. But the problem is... This doesn't fit in there. This disc is off of the 911, and it's meant for different hubs. But before I can cut this in the lathe, I have to be able to get the lathe on the inside of the um, hub. So that's the part that's actually machined round. The outside is a casting. I don't know how perfectly round it's going to be. So that means we've got to take the bearing out, and we've got to take the seal out. You guys have seen me knock out these before um, on, on Volkswagen hubs and shit before. So there's really not too much to it. I use a punch, I get down inside there, and I catch the lip of the outer race of that bearing, and then just tap it until it comes on out. Sometimes it takes a few dozen taps before it starts to move, but once it, it gets going, it, it'll come right out of there. So, we've got to take some aluminum off of here. into a little trouble. I measured the diameter and didn't realize that way down inside of there it's actually stepped. And you can see that. So I measured that too and then I stepped the side of the spindle here. So this will hub. I call it a spindle. It's not a spindle. So this should fit right into there and there's no gaps anywhere the way around. And this is a good fit. Here it doesn't rattle so that worked out nicely Boom. now we're ready to start putting in our bearing spacers these are the parts that came with the transporter house kit what I'm going to do is start assembling this right now if only I could find my grease it was sitting right here next to me but now it's not all right looks like I left the grease out in the garage and that's why I couldn't find it I thought I brought it in with me so the first spacer this little guy here it's gonna go on the um, outside this is a small bearing just like to get a little grease on it and some grease in the bore where it goes to in fact I feel a nipple in there that needs to be sanded down so probably I'm jumping the game here let's go ahead and clean this up real quick yeah it appears where I used the punch I accidentally gouged the uh... yeah you see that right there that little tit I can fix that real easily I'll just get in there with a file real fast and a piece of emery and just clean it up. Alright, all cleaned up and ready to go. 
All right, get in here. Grease up the bore. The spacer fits in there without having to hammer it in. They actually just dropped in. I learned that from the uh, first one that I put in. Damn near exact fit. Then the outer race. And these bearings, by the way, look like they were freshly repacked by uh, whoever previously owned this car. The grease in there was like perfect. So I bet you somebody just fixed their wheel bearings and then crashed their car. And these are salvaged parts. <laughs> All right. Now, to drive in a bearing, you guys have seen me do this before, you use a socket of a similar size. It'll go from this, this very hollow sound to a very high pink pink sound once it's in all the way. There it is. Hear the tone changed? That means the bearing is in. Then we're going to repeat the same process for the outer. And this one it looks like I didn't booger it up on the inside, so that's good. Spacer once again. You probably notice I like to grease everything. You also probably notice I'm not wearing gloves. <laughs> Only when I pack the bearings, and these bearings are actually going to be repacked, but we're not going to do that in this video because I have packed bearings before in some very, very <laughs> innuendo charged videos. Down below in the video description, you can find a link to it if you'd like to watch me pack some bearings, and uh, you'll get to see how that's done. Difference is, this Porsche stuff, or bus stuff in this case, bus actually uses the same size bearings as the uh, early 944s. They're much bigger, so you need some different tooling. So my bearing driver, which is a socket, that's why I brought it back in for you guys to see. There are tools that are specially made just for driving in bearings, but the way I see it, it's only like a couple size bearings that I drive in. To buy an entire tool set for something like that is unnecessary. So usually I use an old junkie socket. Um, in particular, this is a Craftsman, lifetime warranty. So, hey, something to think about. <laughs> There's another socket there. What was that one for? I don't think I was using that in here on this. But anyway, here it is. Got grease all over everything that I've touched. Okay, just need to drive that sucker in. And then we're going to grease up the whole inside of this thing, repack the bearings, put the seal back in, and it's ready to go on the bus. Yeah, that goes on there just like that. I can use one of two locking nuts. I think I can use the Porsche one here, though. Okay, it appears the Porsche nut here actually is going to work. Now, I'm wondering if the one on the left side, which I think is a reverse thread, is going to match on the Porsche. I guess we're going to find out. <laughs> but this stuff all fits on here like it belongs on here. Alright, it's starting to snug now. Loosen it up just a little bit. The prescribed method for me has always been to get them finger tight and then back it off a twelfth of a turn all the while spinning this sucker. And it should get you where you need to be as far as bearing tightness is concerned. We're going to slug that up. I don't hear anything rubbing. It just feels a little sticky for some reason. But even when I pulled it back and it was sitting on the bearings, without even being pressed together this way, it was still that way. I guess it's just the grease is just sticky. I don't see any reason why it should be like that. Okay, well, skipping forward, if we have a problem, we'll know. Let's see what we got here. We've got this disc. And this disc is not the right disc for this Porsche 944 front end. This actually is from a 911. We've got this attached on here. And it looks like it's going to be good. Um, I got a feeling that there's going to be some kind of wheel spacer or something required on here to make this all fit right. That's what it's starting to look like to me. <laughs> I think I'm going to have a similar problem to what we did in the rear. At least with the wheels that I've got anyway. If I had something else, I probably wouldn't have that problem. Take this brake caliber, put it over just like so. Let's see if we can get these bolts lined up here. What's going on here? Right, we 
seem to be having some kind of a little technical difficulty. Something's not lining up. Something's not quite right. What I had to do was just uh, get in there with a die grinder and just elongate the hole. I had to take a few millimeters off the back side of it, bolted everything together, and now it's all as it's supposed to be. But the disc was actually hitting the inside of the caliper, and I measured the disc just to make sure that this aftermarket disc didn't screw me up. It's supposed to be 298 millimeters in diameter. It turned out it was 296.5. So a millimeter and a half smaller than factory, so it should not be interfering with this. In fact, it should be giving me even more clearance. It required a little bit of trimming to make it work right. Anyway, I'll talk to Alex over at Transporter House, see what he thinks about that. We interrupt our coverage of the Smithville Home for the Elderly Massacre to bring you this very special report. Thank you. I just heard back from Alex over at Transporter House about my disc setup over here and about the bracket that I had to elongate the holes on. And uh, he said to me that the kit that he built with this bracket was not intended for this disc. And that means the duck man made a mistake. And I know that doesn't happen a whole lot. I'll admit to it when I've done it, and this time I've done it, but the disc that I'm supposed to be using is from a base model 944, and not this one that's from a uh, 911, or essentially this is uh, the same thickness and offset as a 944 turbo. But he intended the disc to be one that's about 12 millimeters smaller in diameter. And you would say, you know, why would you choose a base model disc instead of a turbo disc if it's going to be smaller? You know, what's the advantage? The advantage is you can fit your 15 inch Fuchs wheels or any other 15 inch wheel over that huge brake caliper. And that's been the problem with disc brakes is you can't get a smaller wheel over it. Well me, I've already got 16 inch wheels. I've already got my discs. So what's the best solution? Sure I could just go ahead and get another set of discs and just bolt it down and be done with it. But the other thing that I can do is take this disc and put it on the lathe and cut off about six millimeters the whole way around. It gave me that uh, additional, I said 12, should be 282 millimeters versus the 298, so it's actually eight millimeters the whole way around. Or I could take the bracket and just continue to elongate these holes just a bit and then weld in a little bit of extra and just uh, clean them up and put the thing back together. In this case, I'm not affecting safety of this at all because all I'm doing is just moving the hole a little bit. I'm not actually going to be cutting up this plate. and. I think that's probably going to be the best solution. That way all of the off-the-shelf Porsche brake parts are all going to work without having any additional modification made. Rather, the modification gets made to the part that modifies everything. And that probably makes the most sense to me. So thank you, Alex, over at Transporter House for being so professional and getting back to me so quickly. It's really interesting that you use the smaller disc on there to make the 15-inch wheels fit. And, you know, great solution on your, your behalf, absolutely. But in my case, we're going 16 inch wheels, that was the plan since the beginning, so yep, we're just going to modify this a little bit and go with what we see right here. I don't think it's that big of a deal, having elongated it a couple millimeters once you bolt it down, it's pretty tight. But what I might just do is on the side where the gap is going to be, the little half moon, I might just get in there with a welder and just fill it in just a little bit and then run my milling bit through it and uh, round out the hole in a different location. The center doesn't really matter, this would be off center a little bit, but Again, it didn't matter at all because the seal doesn't come in contact with it, nor does it protrude into it. It's actually above it. It hovers over it. So that's not a big deal at all. But there it is. Porsche 944 brakes on a Volkswagen bus. Now, just a quick rundown on the parts. This is a 944 early hub, which I believe was from uh, uh, anything before 1985. 86 would have been ideal. You could put an 86 hub on here, put an 86 disc on here. 86s were hard to find, and in this situation I used an a, uh, 85 or before, and then I used a disc from a 911C2, for, uh, I believe it was a 1992 uh, 911C2. That gave me the disc that I needed. I then machined the hub, so that way it dropped down into it, and then I used this kit from Transporter House to make everything fit together with a 1988 944 turbo caliper, and uh, this worked out nicely. It's quite a conglomeration of parts. Everything's quite mixed up. Uh, there's all kinds of silliness that went into this, but uh, <laughs> I think it's going to work out nicely. Thanks for watching, you guys. Really appreciate it. Don't forget to licky, likey, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly. That way you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out duckshit.net for all my different social media links. And if you like some of my 
Duckman Cycles merchandise. That's right. We're selling merchandise, whether it be hats, shirts, and a few other things that are in there too. So hit up the website, you'll find it all there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs> all right, before anybody else gets their shorts in a damn wad. Yes, there's a bearing cap, and yes, I forgot to show it on video, so here it is at the end of the video instead. Here it is. This side is done.